pack room was really a boyhood kind of dream to deal with a true sci-fi story. Pacific Rim picks up where Guillermo left off on the first film. Stephen DeKnight was the director and he wrote with Legendary based on some ideas from Guillermo um, to continue the idea about um, the Jaegers versus Kaiju. So giant robots that are around 300 foot tall fighting giant monsters that come through from another universe. Dean Egg handled the hardest stuff all of the robots and all of the kaiju in the film. So it meant every scene that involved either of those characters meant that that shot really was determined by, you know, Dean Egg CGI artist to do the work. I sat very closely with Stephen DeKnight and we pored over the script and talked about the ideas that he wanted to represent. In order to represent things in daytime, there's no really nowhere to hide. You're dealing with principal light. You can't cheat the ambient light and the way in which objects are lit. So therefore, you, uh, there's a lot more um, problems associated with rendering how those uh, robots and kaiju are gonna appear. So that in itself was a problem, um, a task that we needed to solve. And we solved that firstly by determining that we would shoot plates for every shot. So there would always be a guide for how the lighting would be in a certain situation. On set was fantastic. We shot in Sydney and various locations around the world. So Sydney and Qingdao in China were our principal locations. There are certain limitations in trying to get hold of visual effects plates. We were able to use drones, which are very limited in Japan where we wanted to shoot and also in cold places. So the other locations, Iceland and Korea, served as great locations for you know, plates that would then be augmented as CGI. Now these served as representative plates because not all the time the plates were used. Sometimes there were fully rendered CG environments that, that needed to be generated. And the reason for that is because there was a lot of destruction in the buildings. So rather than have to scan and texture a live action building, they decided you know, to substitute the building as a CG representation. So Stephen really wanted to keep the action flowing and much more video gamey. So it was cut a lot quicker and we needed to design the sequences to be faster and, uh, and more action packed. Dean Egg has always been able to offer up directors lots of different ideas and creative solutions to problems. And I think that's been attractive for directors and producers and has given them a kind of safety net for you know, realizing their vision of the film. The way in which our pipeline is constructed nowadays enables a fast turnaround of very sophisticated shots. And that's a credit to all the R&D team that is present at DNEG who are writing the pipeline. I think that a company needs to be not only creative, but the technical backup, the producers, the R&D team, the technical directors that work on shows are vital to every show. And I think that over the years, Dean Egg has realized the importance of these departments and has, a, and has created a structure that allows us to take on any shot, any sophistication, any complexity, and really deliver it to a very high standard for clients. And so I think that positions ourselves as a, as a great company to take on projects like Pacific Rim Uprising.